Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to Newbrick Workshop. Now, in my recent video, I introduced the UJK Path Protractor and it's designed to allow people with the Mark II Path Guide system and their track saw cutting station uh, to have the ability to create any angle of cut from 0 to 90 degrees. Now, although I demonstrated the system in that first video, I didn't actually put uh, the system through its paces. Well, since then, I've created a five-sided uh, pentagon uh, with the system, and I use an angle of 36 degrees. Uh, I'm not actually going to go through how I produced this, uh, just to say that I learnt a lot uh, because I had an issue with the, uh, how I had the track set up uh, on top of the workpiece. Well, let's take this out of here now. The glue's gone off, and... Uh, and get rid of this, I think, as well. And um, I'm going to give it a sand. Right, I'm going to bring you up close now so you can see this in detail. Right, now if we look at this closely, and this is the worst of the two sides, there's a very, very thin line there, you can see, just there, just there, just there. Very, very thin. Now, with this pentagon, uh, there are five interfaces between pieces. In other words, there are ten cut faces that have to come together accurately. So in making this, uh, any slight error in the system would be magnified by ten times. Uh, and I thought, well, okay, fine, I've produced what is quite a reasonable piece here. But uh, I really needed to demonstrate it uh, in a little bit more of a stressful situation. So in this video, I'm creating a 10-sided uh, piece, a decagon, and that will have 20 faces that come together. So any error will be magnified by 20 times. Now, I'm not going to slow myself down by going through the step-by-step -step setting up uh, of the system to produce uh, what was the 36 degree angle uh, for the pentagon or the 18 degree angle uh, which I have set up uh, for the decagon. Uh, look at the first video if you need to know how to set this thing up. So as far as I'm concerned this is the ultimate test. I'm using the system in the normal way, this time 18 degrees uh, which will mean it's a 10 sided polygon. There we go, so that's all set up. Now when I set this up for the uh, pentagon, uh, which you've seen already, um, I wasn't aware uh, that there would be an issue with the saw sitting on the track. And my problem was that the saw was sitting on the track, but the track was able to move like this. Uh, that's par partly due to me and putting pressure on it, but it was because the track wasn't fully supported underneath. So this time when I have a go at this uh, much more ambitious 10-sided polygon, uh, I'm going to make sure I'm supporting the track as well as I can. Uh, my stock that I'm going to be cutting uh, is this. Oh, that's the other point and something I didn't check when I made this one is that the stock has to be absolutely parallel. And so this time I've checked this and that is 56.07, and that is 56.06 at this end. So that's as accurate as I can uh, get with my equipment. So there's my stock to be cut. Here's my supporting piece, uh, and I'm going to set this up now, and we'll see what happens. And the other thing, that, uh, which I only did towards the end last time, was I'm using... Uh, this uh, fence here um, and I think this will make a, a better job uh, because it allows uh, the stock to be supported along a greater length. Now what I do when I want to set the depth of cut is I put the saw which is not connected to the power supply onto the track and plunge it until the blade hits the bottom of the kerf line and I then raise uh, the cutting depth all the way up and then go up by one more millimeter. And that now is cutting into the kerf line, but not making it any deeper. Now I've now fixed this piece in as my stop. 
everything is all set up. So I'm going to start my series of cuts now. Fingers crossed. Quick look at this, let's put these bits together. Well, I can tell you now that this is far better than I had anticipated. Uh, and uh, I've just got to get an elastic band to go around there and then hopefully I can show you just how good this is before I start gluing it up. And I want you to look at this really carefully and I must tell you that even if I say so myself, I consider this to be virtually perfect. And I, I'm astonished. Uh, I, look, there are 20 cuts there. Uh, there. There are 10 pieces. Effectively, there are 20 faces having uh, to match. And so any error is going to be multiplied by 20. And I can tell you now, uh, that in woodworking terms, that is a perfect piece of woodwork. I'm going to glue this together now and I'll, I'll speed the process up. Um, and this time I'm going to use elastic bands to try and keep it all together. I hope that works. Gonna make sure that's flat. I'm gonna put that on there and put a clamp on, I think, is the is the trick. Let's probably do it. And I'll just let that uh, glue go off. Wow, how exciting. Well here it is. I'll through both sides. Uh, now, I have to say, uh, I am so, so pleased with this. Uh, I've got a mitre saw, I've tried to do uh, polygons like this before, and it's never been very easy, to be frank, uh, but this has absolutely astonished me. Now, I hope this uh, latest test uh, will convince you just how accurate uh, the UJK path protractor is. And here's the other one that I did earlier. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.